OK, so this is an interesting one. This line is telling us that we should adjust it more upright. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't adjust it more oh, upright. <laughs> <laughs> you're making this hard on me, Danny. I know it. You're, you're making this hard on me. <laughs> Hey golfers, we are in the tour van today here at Second Swing. I have Danny with me today. He's a club fitter at the Minnetonka store. Danny, thanks for joining today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Thomas. Not a problem. We are going to be discussing lie angle and how we fit for lie angle in irons. So at Second Swing, we fit dynamically, we fit statically, and we also pay attention to your dispersion pattern on track map. So first off, the static measurement. Danny, what do you do in an iron fitting? Sure. So first off, you want to figure out what way they swing. Are they right-handed or are they left-handed when they swing? Because that dictates which wrist to floor you're going to take. For a right-handed player, since the left hand goes on the top of the grip first, that's where you take the first measurement. Yeah, so a wrist to floor measurement is a, is a great measurement because it really gives us a good starting point. Mm -hmm. I mentioned we also fit dynamically as well, but fitting statically is usually pretty close unless someone has a completely different golf swing. Um, so it really helps us to get ballpark of where we're at. So we like to use the ping fitting tool. So ping has a nice chart that they use. So based on how tall you are and how what measurement is your wrist to floor, we take a look at that and we figure out what lie angle we should start with. So I also mentioned it's usually a good starting point, it's usually pretty close, but everyone does swing differently. So we also like to measure dynamically as well. So my favorite way is to use a golf ball that's got a line right through the middle of it. We, we maybe can draw a, a sharpie line on the, on the middle of it and we kind of pay attention. We put face tape on the club face and pay attention to how that lie angle is on the face. Right. And I like that a little bit better than the lie board test as well. I think that's a lot nicer way to go about it. It's a lot simpler to educate you know, our customers too with that. Yeah, and then we also mentioned the lie board. So lie board, it's, it's, it also is a great way to educate a customer, but it is does sit a little bit higher. So it's about a quarter of an inch higher off the ground. Mm -hmm. And then also if you're hitting off something that is firm, someone may change up their technique a little bit there too. But Absolutely. you definitely can notice tendencies. I do like the golf ball way better. Mm -hmm. And we're going to test both of them today. So we're going to get you to hit some shots for me and uh, we will kind of check out your lie angle. So I also did mention the third way we like to fit for lie angle. So I really like to pay attention to the dispersion pattern on the track man. So Danny, you mentioned that you play one degree upright with your irons, correct? Correct, correct, yeah. I, I don't like to see the ball miss right very often. So because of that, I play it one degree upright. That way, if I do tend to miss, it goes just a little bit further left than expected. Yeah, so on TrackMan, you'll notice that you'll see a lot of those dots on the screen that'll be maybe a little bit more to the left than to the right, right. as opposed to if you were playing a club that was a little bit flatter. Correct. Well, I'm interested to test that because I want to see you hit some shots. Okay. So you ready to hit some golf shots and take a look at how we fit line angle? Absolutely. Let's get after it. So at the beginning of a fitting, I always like to get that static measurement. So I'm going to be measuring Danny's wrist to floor measurement. So as I'm doing this, Danny, how tall are you? Today I'm five foot ten. Today you're five foot ten. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your wrist of floor is about thirty, right on about thirty five inches, okay. and you're five ten. So we like to use the ping chart. So if we look at the ping chart, mm -hmm. so if we were going to intersect five ten okay. with thirty five, you notice how you draw those lines together and it intersects right at that blue spot. Mm -hmm. So blue in ping terminology is one degree upright. Mm -hmm. So you already told me you play one degree upright, so right. that's probably a good start. <laughs> um, right. So that's how you would measure a static measurement. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna begin with the one degree upright club. So the nice thing at second swing is we get a whole bunch of different fitting components and it's a, we're able to fit the lie angle. So with right. TaylorMade, we have a range from two degrees flat mm -hmm. to three degrees upright. So today we're gonna be testing that range Okay. I'm going to start you out with one degree upright with the TaylorMade P770 irons. Okay. So I'm going to piece that together here. 
And the standard is 62.5, correct? The lie angle? That is, that is correct. So okay. the lie angle on this would be like 63.5 if you're going to put it okay. in the lie machine. Now keep mm -hmm. in mind that that is completely different in every different manufacturer. Absolutely. Generally, 62 to 63 is kind of the range. Mm -hmm. There's some manufacturers where the lie angle is a little bit flatter. Right. Those manufacturers, Japanese brands. Mm -hmm. So for example, Mizuno is a good example where their lie angle is a little bit flatter for right. standard. And then uh, some other manufacturers get a little bit more upright around about mm -hmm. the 63 degree range. Right. So that's important to note because there's quite the range and it's important to make sure you pay attention to the, the static and also those dynamic measurements. Right. Right. So we're gonna test those dynamic measurements. That sounds good. So we'll first start off just paying attention to direction. So okay. we'll talk about the dispersion piece. Okay. So I'll get you to hit, you probably don't have to hit too many, maybe three or four shots with okay. one degree upright. Then maybe I'll give you a flatter setting and a little mm -hmm. more upright setting. We'll take, take a look and see what happens. So first two swings in, I notice you got that gentle little draw. You said you don't like to miss the ball right. Right. Didn't miss right. So. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good job there from going one degree upright with right. your clubs. I want to test other ranges. Okay. So I want to try and see what happens if we go flatter and we go more upright. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what the lie angle is. I'm just going to get you to hit it. Okay. So this would be kind of an interesting test to like see it. if the ball goes to the right or goes to the left. Okay, so this is this is really interesting. So I actually did go a little bit flatter with mm -hmm. the lie angle, and mm -hmm. I can tell that you are reacting to that, that that flat lie angle. I can, and you may not notice that you're reacting to it, but I just want to touch on something here: your right. club path. Yeah. Really kind of interesting. So you can see when you were one degree upright, your club path was like 2.9. Mm -hmm. Your club path was 6.1 to the right. Right. So that's got to be partially, you know, probably can see it at, at address exactly. that it looks like it's yep. toe down. Mm -hmm. So you're, it's like you're trying to fight it. Right. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I know we only have two shots and three shots there, but it's kind of interesting how you kind of a little bit more kind of wider range. Mm -hmm. But that, that really kind of surprised me. So it's important to note the direction the ball goes. Um, we also want to pay attention to where you ha catch it on the, on the face as well. And we'll get to that there as well. But okay. tell me, Tell me a little bit more about those last three shots. So the the last three shots, you know, as soon as I put it down, yeah, I, I could see it was a little bit flat. Um, during the swing, I, if you were to tell me I was three more degrees inside out, I, I didn't really feel that. But it's interesting to see those results off the bat. I have played a flatter lie angle in the past, um, but I haven't in quite a few years, so it's been a while. Yeah, I honestly, I was expecting you to miss it further to the right. Me too. And it, it did, too. Uh, it the third swing, you did miss it to the right. <laughs> Normally, I'd expect that dispersion pattern to be a lot further over right. to the right. Right. But keep in mind, it's always player dependent. Right. And you, you just tell, you may not have felt like you were reacting to it, yeah. but you, the numbers were telling me that you were trying <laughs> to manipulate something, some, some way to right. still hit that club straight. Right, right. I think that just goes back to, I don't want to miss right at all. That's just my game and what I'm used to. But. Well, it's kind of interesting too, because you also did hit it a lot more kind of solid there as well, which was kind of interesting there that your ball speed was quite significantly faster right. as well. So you definitely were working to make sure that thing was not going to the right. <laughs> if we look at, your, um, at, your, at your, your club path, you can see definitely a little bit more to the right. Mm -hmm. Base to path number was a little bit to the left. And that's even right. with um, the club being three degrees flatter than before. So let's test the other side. Okay. So we already know that this is going to be, this one was flat. So we already know that this next one is going to be more upright. But it's going to be kind of interesting to see if you try and adjust anything or not. Okay. Okay, once again, interesting. Mm -hmm. Hit a straight pretty much kind of every single time. So we went from two degrees flat to three degrees upright. <laughs> <laughs> you're making this hard on me, Danny. I know it. You're, you're making this hard on me. And that's why we're gonna showcase 
uh, with the other the other ways we're going to showcase right. using the the golf ball as well to yeah. show the the impact location okay. and we'll, we'll showcase the live board a little bit there too but that's one thing i mean you're a better golfer you understand how the golf club should be presented at impact right so you were definitely adjusting a little bit there okay. to making sure I mean, we've got a five degree range right there right and you still hit it on the same line okay so it's kind of interesting what uh how was the club path that time around when we went more upright Did yeah so it was still a little bit into out so actually it was the exact same so 6.1 degree into out it's kind of it's really kind of interesting there right um you notice ball speed just a little bit less ball speed than before mm -hmm. but yeah it's this is not what i would have expected <laughs> and this is this is great i i because not every fitting is always going to be perfect right so this just showcases that everyone is different and they do kind of react to golf to golf right. clubs differently every every single time mm -hmm. we're trying to showcase how lie angle kind of works mm -hmm. so i want to showcase that now with the the face perfect. tape so let's stick with the three degrees up, right? Okay. Oh, so I'm putting face tape on the on the club here. You can see right there, this is the face tape. So I'm gonna be paying attention to how these lines are here at, imp at impact. Okay, so let's take a look at that club face there. See if we notice any kind of trend there. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Now, where you catch on the club face is definitely very important. So we do notice when the club is, this is a three degree upright club. Notice how you caught it a little bit on the toe side. Right. If we were to flatten a little bit, naturally it would bring it a little bit more to the middle of the face, we would, we would expect. But it's kind of interesting, because you are re reacting to the, the lie angle on this club, right. that this line is telling us that we should adjust it more upright. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't adjust it more no. upright. We know that that last shot there kind of went pretty kind of far left there as right. well. So. That was kind of interesting. Gear effect also was kind of helping that right. ball to go a little bit there to the le left side there as well. But in the day, I do want to try and get that thing a little bit more closer to the middle of the face. Right. So I'm curious to see what happens if we go to the, the flat setting now and see okay. what happens. Sure, let's do it. Okay, so once again, this is interesting. So we changed the lie angle by five degrees <laughs> but you'll notice how that line is still kind of pointing, it's telling us to adjust upright, which I, I b agree with, right. uh, because this is two degrees flat. But you'll notice how you still kind of caught out on the toe side there mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Well, I think a lot of this is to do with the length of the golf club there too. Right. And you mentioned to me that you've seen similarities to this before, and you said yeah. that you like to rely on your static measurement a lot there too, just right. because your swing, you adjust to things. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's probably the most important thing to kind of pay attention to is in the day, if you're seeing inconsistencies mm -hmm. or even consistencies that just don't make sense, right. really in the day, just trust that static measurement because it's going to be very, very accurate across right. the board. So right. I want to also get you to hit off the live, live board. board. Okay. I'm curious to see how <laughs> that relates here as well. Me so too. we still have this at two degrees flat. And then when you are hitting off the lie board, I do like to have the ball just push just a little a bit, bit further forward, forward than, the, than the middle, just because I don't want to have someone hit the back of the board and break the board <laughs> or do anything <laughs> crazy, which I think you've got a couple of stories there that, as well. I've seen that happen. You've yep. seen that happen? Yeah. Right. So right. important to remember, this is not going to hurt. No. It's not going to damage the golf club. Right. Trying to get, trying to see some turf interaction coming through. Right, and I, I've had some players ask where we got these because they want to take these out on the range because it feels so good you know, <laughs> for players that come down at it really good. Yeah, but this should be an interesting test based on what we just saw there. Yeah, because you mentioned come down if you have a steep attack angle, you're hitting into this artificial turf. Mm -hmm. It's going to probably hurt a little bit. Right. Yeah. Right. It's going to bounce off it. I can definitely definitely see what those guys mean. That felt really, really good coming off that board. <laughs> really, really okay. good. So let's take a look here. So we will notice, finally got something right. <laughs> yes. So it's kind of interesting. So not every fitting is always going to be perfect. Right. And I enjoy these kind of fittings or experiences because <laughs> it just makes me better as a person and to try everything out right. to try and find the best fit. But we will notice toe interaction. Mm -hmm. So toe interaction. So this is the two degree flat club right here. So if you're catching it interaction off the toe normally, mm -hmm. 
You said you don't like to miss it right, and you go right. upright. Normally, right. the face is going to kind of kick open a little bit, and you're going to miss it a little bit out to the right. right. So if we take a look at the, at the club here, we can see how there's a wear mark on the toe side. This would suggest that we probably should go about two degrees more upright to try and bring that closer to the middle there too. Right. I'm going to go to the other extreme because we've gone extreme to extreme. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try and go to three degrees upright. I'm curious to see if we do get you over here mm -hmm. and then we can kind of see if we are in the right place with, with your one degree up lie angle. So Danny, it's really kind of interesting because we are not seeing what you would typically see in a perfect fitting. Right. Now, no fitting is perfect. Mm -hmm. We'll notice that we did get you moved a little bit from the toe side, moved okay. a little bit this way by, we moved to that three degree upright setting. But this is really important to kind of bring up. And we were kind of discussing that fitting a static measurement in this instance, when you have an inconsistent golfer come in, mm -hmm. is really more important than trying, and also paying attention to where the ball's going, right. is kind of more important. We'll notice when you've hit two degrees flat, you've hit three degrees upright, you still hit the ball pretty straight. Right. So I would trust for sure your static measurements in this mm -hmm. case. But we can Perfect. see the trend that, yeah, it was a little bit more on the toe side, right. not as far on the toe side when it was flat. Mm -hmm. So that was accurate there. Right. But even when we tested the ball, even when we tested <laughs> the lie angle on the, on the board, it was still right. kind of the same exact re result right. there. And this is similar to you know, what I've seen in the past, you know, when I've tested this as well. You know, sometimes, especially with my back issues as well, inconsistencies, inconsistencies happen. Um, a lot of the players that come in to see us, this happens too. And just like when we first started talking, you said that static measurement, generally players don't fall too far away from that. That's why I heavily relied on my static measurement than one degree up in what I play. Yeah, I mean, static measurements, they're, you know, they're always going to be very, very close unless you have someone that's right. extremely different the way they hold that golf club. If they hold sure. their hands really, really low mm -hmm. or really, really high, right. you're going to notice maybe some, some differences there. But that's going to be abnormal. So right. that's usually not going to be the, the case um, in 90% of fittings. Right. Um, so it's kind of interesting, you know, we talk about inconsistencies. So as we were doing this, this test here, I want to touch on that, on that club path and consistency number a little bit here. So you can see that you have, you know, your range from 8.2 degrees in to out, but from 2.9 to 8.2 degrees in to out. So that is why we are seeing inconsistencies kind of across the board. Your face angle numbers are kind of a little bit inconsistent. And that's the most important thing is making sure that we fit you, fit you statically in something that you can trust that we know is going to be pretty accurate. And see, on average, you're hitting the ball fairly straight. It's not like it wasn't, uh, wasn't far off line or anything right. like that, no matter what kind of setting that we had it, whether that's with the, the lie board or whether that's with the, the face tape. Um, some of these distances are going to be a little bit different because when you do have face tape on the face, the ball is going to spin differently right. there as well. Also, you mentioned the, the club can bounce off the board. so. Mm -hmm. Right. Interaction might have felt pretty good at, at times or yeah. maybe not so good there as well. So Danny, the nice thing is using TrackMan is we can really take a look at that dynamic lie angle. And we noticed there was, I mean, we were seeing inconsistencies or consistencies <laughs> you could probably say, considering we were changing around the, the lie angle from three degrees up to two degrees flat. Mm -hmm. I would have expected the dynamic lie angle to change, but it really didn't. So you are definitely, the ideal person that would make it challenging mm -hmm. on any fitter. Right. Um, so if we look at the, the numbers here, so I want to bring this up because this, okay. this is really, really intriguing. So when you had the club set at two degrees flat, you will notice that your lie angle was 66 or 67 degrees. When we had the club at three degrees upright, it was only 67.5. So it was only like half a degree mm -hmm. more upright. You can see here when we were testing earlier on, upright 67.7, 67.2, 66.5. So it was more upright. So your dynamic lie was more upright because if you take a look here, you can see that at flatter, it was 66.8, 66.5, 66. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a degree, but not the five degree range that we tested. Right. So it's really interesting that you, were, that you weren't intentionally, but you were manipulating that 
right. just by reacting to how the club sat at address or the way that you thought the club was going to be at impact. So this is an example of a really inconsistent iron fitting. Now, not every iron fitting is going to be perfect. So if you're a golfer that is considering an iron fitting and you feel like your swing is relatively inconsistent, believe us, we can help you. We can make sure that we fit you, whether that is statically, whether that is dynamically, if we're seeing general trends. Every golfer swings completely different and make sure that you come on into our stores or work with a fitter online and we can definitely help you out. Come on in and get fit like a pro.